Hello everyone and welcome back. In this small video, I'm going to show you that how you can create a list control in Surf UI and make its row, the complete row, row tappable. So let's see how we can do that. The first thing I need is obviously to create a list, which is pretty simple because you can use the list view control. Pass in some sort of a range, or if you have an array, you can pass in an array. For the ID, which will uniquely identify each single item, I'm just going to pass in self, which means each item or the hash of each item anyways. Index in, and then I can use the text view to display the value for the index using the string correlation. There we go. Interpolation actually, not correlation. There we go. So we can actually display a list of numbers, the indexes, that's great. So how can we add a tappable event on this particular control? So on this text control right now, if I go ahead and do a on tab gesture, I can do that. But if I do that, that will be only on the text. And the text is, well, very small. We need to put it on the complete row. So let's go ahead and wrap this around with a horizontal stack. Okay, now let's see if I click on the horizontal stack, you can still see that it is only selecting the text because that's the only thing you have in the horizontal stack. I can add a spacer view, which is going to extend that. And now you can see that the horizontal stack is actually selecting the whole row, all right? Now, if I go ahead, now when I select the horizontal stack, you can see the whole row is selected, which is great. And now I can say over here on tap gesture, and I can do whatever I want. So right now I'm just gonna print it out and I'm just gonna say tapped, all right? And it looks like that when I'm going to click on any of these row, even this white area, then it should be printing out the tap. So let's go ahead and debug this. So right click on this play button and say debug. And the reason we are debugging is so that we can actually see it printing out something on the console because on line number 19, we actually use print tapped. Okay, let's clear this out and click anywhere and you can see it's not really doing anything. But if I click on the actual number, the text portion, you can see that it's working. So spacer control, which is responsible for making all that gap, that space, it's not really tappable. So what can we do in this case? One solution is to use something called a content shape and pass in a rectangle because, well, our row is a rectangle. After doing that, let's go ahead and run this again in the debug mode, debug preview. Let's clear it up. And now if I click on anywhere inside that row, you can see I'm clicking on that white area, it can actually let me know that where I click. And I can obviously click on these numbers also. So I can basically click anywhere. If you do want to find out that which one was actually clicked, well, simply print out the value of the index. So index. Let's go ahead and do a debug preview. And let's go ahead and tap somewhere. And you can see that wherever I tap, it is saying, is it's telling me the correct index. Pretty cool, right? Now this is a small tip, and obviously some of you will already know about this, but the, it's not very intuitive. You have to say content shape, and then you have to pass in the rectangle. So I don't really consider it to be very intuitive kind of a API, or at least this particular feature. But if you want the whole row to be tappable, which most probably you do, you have to set the content shape and pass in the rectangle. Don't remove the spacer. Even with this, you need the spacer to be adding that extra space, all right? If you want to learn more about creating Surf UI applications, then check out my course, Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is the best selling course on Surf UI. You can see it's 12.5 plus hours of course, and I keep on adding new content. We're gonna start with the introduction to 
SurfUI, then we're going to dive into building list and navigation, building even the grid layout, and then understanding the state and binding, which is very, very important topic. So definitely watch that section. Even after that, I'm going to dive into the understanding MVVM design pattern because even though you have the SurfUI framework, you can use any design pattern and MVVM is actually preferred. But look at all these sections. You're going to create a coffee ordering application, which is going to be integrating with the JSON API. You're going to learn about gestures. You are going to learn about how to run SurfUI on all the devices, even core data integration with SurfUI. So it's a lot of stuff that I cover in the SurfUI course. Now, the best way to get this course is the link in the description. The link in the YouTube description, click on the link and you will get the best deal. And to be really honest, if you use that link, I get to keep a little more of the revenue. So thank you so much for your support and I really hope that you enjoy the course.